Okay, hello everyone. If you're on Long Island or in the New York area, you probably have a bright sunny spring day, which is wonderful to go out walking, go for a run, and use those feet the way they help you to get around, to um, support your body. Okay, feet are so important to us. And, um, but they could give us some tenderness, you know, you got to take care of them. It's so important. And I know this for a fact because I've had a couple problems throughout the years with my feet, uh, plantar fasciitis, to, to name one thing. And that's why I wanted to uh, feature this webinar on plantar fasciitis. I'm going to talk about what it is and some helpful hints for it for you, who uh, any of you who may have experienced that or are experiencing that type of foot pain. And I'll touch upon some other types of uh, issues with feet. Um, the feet really are our foundation and our first contact with the earth. I mean, before we were wearing shoes, basically that's how we, uh, you know, like I said, we, we, we tested the waters, so to speak. You really do, when you test the waters, you put your foot in the pool, you, 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 you're walking, you're checking to see if a surface is slippery with or without shoes on. You know, maybe back in the day, or if you're wearing, you know, open toe shoes, you know, you, you might feel a thorn and pull your foot back. So the feet really help us to navigate through our world. And there are 72 hundred, a lot of nerve endings, 7,200 nerve endings on our feet. And I'll talk about that more later on and why that's significant. But uh, before we go any further, I just want to talk about a little bit of the anatomy. I'm not going to get too technical or too into this, but you can see this is the bottom of the foot, the sole of the foot, or what we call the plantar surface. Okay. And uh, of course, the foot, just like the rest of the body, it's made up of bones, it's made, of, made, made up of muscle, it's made up of tendons and ligaments, okay? Uh, anybody who study, studied anatomy in, in the past knows these terms. Uh, the, I'll just jump right in. The major bones of the, the foot of the toes or the phalanges. We also have phalanges, which are fingers. Uh, the toes are also called the phalanges. The big toe has a special name. It's called the, the hallux. Okay, so you might hear the term halusis or halusis. Okay, when we talk about structures that relate to the big toe, uh, there's metatarsals, which um, branch off of the toes. Uh, the calcaneus is the heel, and the navicular and the cuneiform are uh, called, um, they're, they're the tarsals, okay, which, you know, are the, the form kind of like just in front of the ankle, you know, they give us more movement in the foot. Now, of course, there's muscles in the foot. If you look on this diagram, the red part is the muscle. The muscles tend to be shown as red because they are vascular, meaning they have a blood source, okay? And the muscles are what, like any muscle in the body, are what uh, help us move, okay? They give form to our body, but they also supply the energy and help with the function of moving. And muscles um, also have tendons that come off them. If you look at this picture here, if you look in the center, There's the, um, it's a flexor muscle. I think it's a flexor. Um, <laughs> but if you look at that muscle right in the branches off, and I'm going to, I don't know if you can hear me well. I just got a message. Uh, the, the connection might not be too well. So I hope you can still hear me. I'm just going to move over here. And, um, as I was saying, tendons connect muscle to bone. Ligaments connect bone to bone, okay? So just a little bit of anatomy, and that's wherever you are in the body. Um, so that's what we're looking at here. So you can see there's a lot of structure, different structures of the foot. And when there's a lot of structure, usually things can go wrong, okay? The more bendy things are, like the neck tends to be more prone to herniated discs because it's more bendy. The foot has a lot of structures and it's also weight bearing. It carries our weight too. So, you know, if you get a little overweight, it's going to put a little bit of pressure on the feet too. So unfortunately, yeah, the, the feet really 
help us out in our daily lives, but they also are prone to different you know, issues, you know, foot pain in particular, of course. And um, if you look at this woman here, you can see she doesn't look happy. All right, it looks like, looks like she's got some foot issues, just the way she's sitting and looking down. I'm gonna guess that those sandals aren't helping her any, okay? They're probably not giving her the support she needs and maybe her arches are a little fallen. Maybe she's even got some blisters, I don't know. You know, all these things are from, you know, walking a lot, you know, carrying that heavy bag as she walks and as she waits, she's just, you know, fretting that like, I could hear her saying like, oh, my, my aching feet. So, uh, you know, Important, it's important to have uh, good footwear, and I'll discuss that more. Uh, foot pain is very common. One in five adults are affected by it, and it really helps there. It, uh, it, excuse me, it, it uh, you know, uh, affects the activities of their life, you know, on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, we've all known people or have had pain due to an injury. Maybe you fell, you sprain your ankle, oh, that hurts. And sprains can be sometimes more painful than breaks. Uh, you can sprain your ankle and um, you know have a, a take a long time to recover. Maybe even having to be on crutches, even without a break. And um, you know, I say this that it takes sometimes longer than a break of a bone because bones actually have a blood source. They're considered more vascular than a ligament or a tendon that I mentioned. Okay, so. If you don't have the blood source going to, let's say, a ligament, you know, when you sprain yourself, when you, when you hurt a ligament, they call it a sprain. When you hurt a tendon, they call it a strain, okay? Just a little information there. But, um, you know, strains and sprains can be, uh, you know, take a long time to heal, even longer than a break. Uh, sports injuries, people that play soccer, play people at football, I mean, really, any sport, a fall, something can drop on your foot and you can, uh, you know, break it. You know, many times, you know, you have to get surgery or walk on crutches, but they all cause, all these injuries cause pain. Uh, bunions and hammer toes are very common. Um, they're both basically um, a malformity of the joint itself. Uh, the toes, a bunion, is the big toe that gets you know bent out of shape and it's basically anybody if you've seen a bunion it almost looks like it's like bent like a boomerang where the bottom of the big toe is uh, deviated outward and the upper the, the top knuckle is bent towards the second toe so it almost looks like a bent on an angle and that can be very painful and it's usually caused by uh, you know sh shoes that are usually are too tight it's also hereditary too by the way. Uh, so if your grandmother or mother has a bunion, I would say, especially if you're a woman and you wear um, high heel shoes or tight fitted shoes or shoes with a small um, toe box, you know, be, be careful uh, and, and keep an eye out for bunions. Um, maybe put some padding in to prevent them. Uh, soak your feet, get, you know, massage, have your feet massaged and you know, take care of your feet. Um, to prevent that. And uh, yeah, the padding is good uh, in the shoes so that the uh, skin doesn't rub and you don't create corns too. Now with hammer toes, it's actually the second and third toe that get affected and become bent, bent like in a claw position downward, okay? Um, and both these conditions, if they get severe, you might need surgery. And foot surgery, unfortunately, people are usually out for a number of weeks. Um, I've known, uh, I knew one woman who had uh, bunion surgery and she couldn't drive for several weeks. So, you know, it's important to take care of your feet. Arthritis is very common. Um, osteoarthritis is one type, rheumatoid arthritis is another. Osteo, meaning bone, affects mostly the bones. And the real difference, or I shouldn't say the real difference, but one of the key differences of osteoarthritis and rheumatoid arthritis, because they can present and look very similar, is that osteoarthritis can be on one side. So you could have a node or a swelling in the knuckle, of, let's say your toe, and not have it on the other side. You have it on the right toe, not have it on the left foot, okay, the left toe same toe. 
Rheumatoid tends to be what we call bilateral, and that means it affects, it's more systemic, meaning it's in the system, the, the rheumatism is in the system, and it affects, usually affects both sides, okay, with uh, nodes, um, fingers tend to bend, um, like, you know, away, like outward, you know, they deviate outward, and um, it could be a lot of pain also. And rheumatoid arthritis is an autoimmune disease. So like lupus, the tissue, your own body's tissue is, um, or your own body is attacking its own tissue, I should say. So, uh, you know, uh, you want to try to avoid that and um, try to avoid inflammatory foods to not get this condition or other autoimmune conditions. And, um, you know, drink plenty of water uh, and, uh, you know, to really take care of yourself because um, they are reversible. And we have a naturopathic doctor who really specializes in uh, autoimmune diseases. If um, you, had, you, you know, need care for that, I could, uh, you know, put, point you in the right direction with that if you uh, email me and I'll give you my email address later. But I uh, want to mention gout also. Gout is kind of a form, I would put it under the umbrella of arthritis, and it's a buildup of uric acid in the body and blood. And like rheumatoid arthritis and osteoarthritis or any kind of pain condition that's inflammatory, as I said, you want to in, in, avoid foods that are inflammatory, and many of these foods fall into the nightshade family, and I've mentioned these before in webinars, nightshades are white potato, peppers, eggplant, and tomatoes, okay? Now, in particular, with uh, gout, you want to avoid alcohol, sugar, and processed meats. I would say avoid those with any inflammatory condition, but especially with, with gout. And um, I've read and I've heard that uh, tart cherry juice is good for uh, relieving the uric acid associated with gout. Okay, if anybody has any comments on that, you can put it in the uh, chat box or the question box uh, if you know that's correct or incorrect. Okay, and here we have plantar fasciitis, my favorite. <laughs> Not really my favorite, but like I said, I've had it before, so uh, I've learned a few things of how to treat it for myself and others, and I'd like to share that with you. So let's just talk a little bit about what it is. Okay, um, the fascia on the bottom of the foot. It's called the plantar fascia. You're probably asking yourself, well, what is fascia? Fascia, I would say, is a connective tissue that um, encapsulates all of our cells, or, or every structure of our body, our, our bones, our tendons, our organs, and um, it's like it's like an envelope around everything. Okay, that we in our body, and we have fascia at the bottom of our feet, of course. And when the fascia which the plantar fascia actually runs from um, the heel to the toes. When that gets inflamed, it causes pain, okay? And the hallmark symptom of that is that when you get up out of bed, you stand up and you feel pain in your heel in particular. And that's usually the first question that a podiatrist or uh, any other practitioner would ask you with foot pain if they suspect plantar fasciitis. They would say, well, when you get out of bed, when you step, take your first step, do you feel pain? And if you say yes, they'd say you've got plantar fasciitis, you know, for the most part, because there really aren't any diagnosed, uh, diagnostic tests for the condition. Um, you know, they would only do an x-ray, let's say if they suspect a break from an injury, um, there's really, you don't get an MRI, you know, for, for plantar fasciitis. It's usually um, ruled out by different symptoms and uh, what, what leans towards that and the hallmark symptom being that heel pain. Uh, the causes, like I said, poor fitted footwear, uh, poor arch support in the shoes. Okay, if you're wearing those flat flip-flops or slippers, you know, been wearing a lot of slippers lately. Many of us have been home for a few months or working at home. You don't have to put dress shoes on and, and go out to work. So we've been spending many hours in slippers and things of that nature that don't give us the support. We'll flop, our feet are flopping around a bit. 
So uh, you get more prone to plantar fasciitis. Also, if you're overweight, you know, being overweight is going to put um, strain on any of your joints, any of the weight bearing joints, the knees, especially the feet. Um, if you have flat feet or even high arches, you're prone to this condition because um, the flat feet, you tend to, most people tend to, you know, walk either, you know, like a duck pointed out and their feet tend to pronate or fall inward as they walk. They kind of like squash inwardly. And uh, that's common with obesity also, you know, because of the extra weight put on, put on the feet, they tend to, you know, fall inward. Um, for people that run or walk, whether whatever their weight is, they tend to <laughs> get plantar fasciitis just from the impact of, of their uh, feet on a hard surface. You know, there's this poor guy here, he's got his shoes off. He's probably been running and you can see it looks like he's running on cement. So running or walking briskly on a regular basis can give you foot pain in particular uh, particularly uh, plantar fasciitis. Uh, and as I said, standing on hard, sur hard services, um, like a teacher, people that work on assembly lines are prone to this because they're standing on uh, concrete floors usually. Uh, fortunately, many times they're given a, a mat, like a rubber mat to stand on, which is good. If you work in the supermarket, the same thing. So all these things lead to that, you know, Arch uh, under surface of the foot pain, uh, in particular, uh, in particular plantar fasciitis, and um, they say everything's connected. When you have tight calves, okay, calves being the back of the lower leg, it pulls can pull on the heel, and then the heel, of course, is connected to the the to the uh, the bottom of the foot and it could cause foot pain also. So many times when people have plantar fasciitis, you want to really encourage them to stretch their legs, particularly uh, the, the calves, and the hamstrings, which are the back of the thighs and the feet, okay? And you'll get good results um, and prevent um, you know, that foot pain I'm you know, talking about right now. And as I said, footwear, very important. Um, you want to have a good fit. And I would suggest if you're prone to problems with your feet, to go to a good shoe store and get fitted. Get the proper size. And maybe they can, the, the salesperson, the clerk can make a suggestion of what type of shoe is best for you, what shape of shoe is best for you but you wanna make sure you have the right size. And I'll tell you a quick story. When I was having you know, the foot pain, I went um, to a shop and the woman there measured my feet and she said, you know, you've been wearing a size too big. And it's real, I think this is what's really starting to give you the problem. And I was surprised because I thought by wearing, you know, a half size bigger or a little, you know, looser shoe, it'd be more comfortable and I wouldn't have the foot pain. But she said, you know, you're not getting the support. You're your heel is flopping around just like they would in a sandal or a flip flop or slippers. Um, your true size is actually a half size smaller than you've been wearing. So good to get um, fitted for you know the right size. And I mentioned support, you wanna have support, especially uh, you know around the ankle, you know, or you know, laces, lace shoes are very good. Uh, inserts work wonderfully and orthotics especially for giving the support of the arches of the feet. And uh, with orthotics, what's nice about orthotics, you can get them customly made, you know, custom fitted orthotics to your foot and use a mold. And we actually do that in Inner Source Health um, if, if anybody's interested, you know, which is great. And um, of course, you know, at home, there's plenty of things you can do for your feet whether you have plantar fasciitis or not, or just sore feet. Um, I would say the classic remedy at home for plantar fasciitis in particular is to use, um, to roll your foot over a frozen water bottle. And if you look to the right, uh, there's a little description, sorry, it's a little blurry, but uh, you take a water bottle and you can fill it, uh, you know, three quarters of the way with water, you freeze it, and then you can roll your foot over it, the sole of your foot over it. And that really the, the, the ice will um, 
you know, uh, lower the inflammation. And also as, you know, you're almost giving yourself a little stretch and massage as you do that on your foot. And of course, stretching in general is always good for uh, plantar fasciitis in particular because the calves can tend to get tight. Also soaking your feet. I'm gonna talk a little bit about the stretching. Um, the first picture shows uh, someone stretching her feet. You can see her toes are curled upward and it's stretching the plantar fascia because the toes are curled upward and that um, you know, elongates the structure, the bottom of the foot, okay? It's also good, as I said, I keep talking about, uh, you know, the calves being tight or the hamstrings. The second picture is a good stretch for the foot. You can see he's stretching his foot, calf, and hamstring. There's also a very good calf stretch that you can do against the wall where you bend the opposite knee. Um, I don't have a picture of that. You could probably find something on YouTube or if you're interested, um, you know, I could show you that uh, in, a, in an appointment. You know, as uh, Dr. Peter Bongiorno said, we are uh, taking appointments in our office um, starting next week, which is great. And I can demonstrate some stretches if you are having, uh, you know, plantar fasciitis. And also, you know, there's a great yoga posture downward facing dog. It's one of the first ones you learn and it really is my favorite because this stretch goes where it's needed and in my case the calves. Okay um, when I do this stretch I can really feel you know a good <laughs> I don't want to use the word burning but we all know that good stretch feeling and it's really made a difference for me in not getting plantar fasciitis again, or when I feel it coming on again, I do, you know, the stretches that I showed uh, in the previous slide and also the downward facing dog. Um, and it looks, it, for, for those of you who haven't done this before, it looks a lot harder than it is. Um, you can, you know, find a friend that does yoga and uh, he or she can show you. And it's, like I said, it's one of the first postures that you learn and very effective. Okay, as I said, I'm an acupuncturist, and acupuncture is very good for any foot pain, any pain in the body, really, and I'm very excited and looking forward to being able to work in person with people, you know, hands-on, and uh, with acupuncture, there are plenty of points that can relax the calf muscles that I was talking about, uh, um, you know, just promote uh, blood flow to the foot area for foot pain. A lot of good points on the feet. The most powerful points in the body are actually below the elbows, between the elbows to the fingertips and from the knees to the, to the toes, okay? But you're probably thinking like, oh, you're gonna put needles in my feet? We can use other points too. Like I said, I could do points that can uh, do acupuncture on uh, the back of your legs, just to loosen up the muscles there and relieve the pressure that's found, you know, that, that's related to the foot, that's pulling, that's pulling from the calf to the foot. Massage and reflexology, you know, excellent for foot pain. Um, you know, who doesn't like getting the massage at the end of a pedicure? <laughs> we always say the best part, right? And uh, reflexology, I'm going to have to say, is not the same as massage. Anybody who's a true reflexologist is probably listening and saying, oh, it's not the same as massage. And it really isn't. Reflexology is based on um, the foot or the feet being a microsystem of the body. So the right foot represents the right side of the body. The left foot represents the left side of the body. And if you put your feet together, the, where they touch in the middle is where the spine is and so forth and so, and so on, you know, so that the top of the toes would represent the head and, and you move down, you know, through the body. And um, in reflexology, it's not only just the limbs that are represented, but the organs of the body. So if you go for a reflexology session and you have, let's say, gallbladder problems, we can reflex that area. We call it reflexing because we use special techniques in the area and um, on the on the feet to uh, take care of or, or you know treat and help other uh, problems using the feet. Okay, but it's uh, not really massage, but very effective. But massage also is very effective, and of course you know acupuncture and herbs too, um, especially you know with arthritis, chronic pain. 
there are Chinese herbs that can be used to help um, move out things that are causing that pain, like the pattern we call it in Chinese medicine. It could be, you know, in, in our, the case of arthritis, there could be longstanding like colds or, you know, lack of circulation. Colds because of lack of circulation, because of an old injury in that area. Um, we could use herbs just to move chi or energy through that area of the foot to relieve the pain. So there's different methods that we could use, you know, to relieve foot pain. Um, I want to leave you all with a uh, foot soak recipe. Um, foot baths are very effective after a day of standing or running or walking or, or, or any time that you might have, you know, sore feet. And uh, basically, you know, you look at the picture here, you take a, a tub or this looks like a, a large metal bowl, fill it with water, of course, test the uh, temperature of the water. You don't want it too hot, but you know, nice warm temperature is good. And you can put some Epsom salts in. Epsom salts can be found at, uh, you know, any drugstore usually comes in a container, like a milk container or uh, a bag, like a plastic bag. And um, you could add that to the water. Usually I would say about a half cup to um, a basin of this size. And um, any of your favorite essential oils, I um, put down wintergreen and peppermint, and I like lemongrass, and of course lavender is very uh, relaxing. So you could just drop a few, uh, put a few drops of your favorite uh, essential oil into a foot bath and just relax and uh, let that foot pain just slide away. Okay, I want to leave you all with a quote. The job of feet is walking, but their hobby is dancing. And I just get such a nice image of that. You know, feet do so much for us. They don't always get the credit they deserve, but, you know, they help us dance and uh, enjoy life. Um, I wanted to see if there's any questions. I'm not sure. If I can bring that up, let me see. Um, all right, if there's any questions, actually, you can email me at victoria at innersourcehealth.com. It's the email address right in the middle. And um, as I said, I'm available for acupuncture sessions. We're starting to book now. You could call 631-421-1848 and speak to our lovely Lindsay, who's our office manager, and she'll set you up. Um, I also mentioned um, Dr. Dawn, who's at our office, really is uh, specializes in, uh, she's a naturopathic doctor, and she specializes in uh, things of, uh, you know, autoimmune um, related issues such as rheumatoid arthritis and lupus. Uh, I did want to give a shout out to her because she's very good with that. Um, and uh, my social media is here and I see we have a question. I'm going to go to that, but I want to thank you all and let's see what we have here. Okay. Um, there's a question that says, can bunions be corrected? Uh, bunions can be corrected to the best of my knowledge, with surgery. Um, because of the, the progression of the deformity, it's very difficult to use acupuncture or reflexology or massage or even uh, physical therapy to uh, totally correct a bunion. Um, and I'm sorry, that I know they're very painful. Uh, I don't know if I told the story, but my grandmother had bunions and my mother used to have to, you know, cut the side of her shoes or her sandals because she had um, a lot of tenderness. So, um, you know, I know they can be very painful, but um, I would talk to a podiatrist about that. That's what I would recommend in the case of uh, bunions that are already, you know, formed. But what you can do in the meantime is, um, I'm sure you know about using, they have like some little pads or lamb's wool between your toes is very good because um, it's, uh, it, it's unlike cotton, it's not as, um, it's softer. It's not as much as uh, an irritant as cotton. So I recommend, you know, getting some lamb's wool. You can buy it online and I have seen it in stores too. I think they have it at uh, some of the drugstore chains. Um, so you could try that. Uh, let me see if there's any other questions. I think that will 
do it for today. Oh, let's see. Uh, Are chronic ingrown toenails a sign of gait problem? You know, that's something I'm gonna have to research, Angela. Um, very good question. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna jot that question down. And if you want to email me, please do to remind me, and I could get that uh, information to you. Because that's one thing that I uh, I'm not familiar with as far as the cause of ingrown toenails. Okay, um, I'm just writing this down. If anybody knows of that. Um, You know, you can please uh, put it in the chat box. Let me see if we have any there. Okay. Well, that looks like all for today. I want to thank you, you so much. Stay well, stay safe, and uh, let's have a nice summer coming up. And please stay in touch if you're a patient of mine already, you know, or, or if you want to be a new patient to Inner Source, we would be happy to work with you. Thank you, and have a good rest of the day. Bye.